In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Serpent Samurai build. This is a level 150 Dexterity Samurai build that uses poison to great effect. So the weapons we use for this build are the Serpent Bone Blade and the Uchi Katana, and there are a couple reasons for that. The Serpent Bone Blade has poison buildup on it natively, and it has decent dexterity scaling with higher base damage than the Uchi Katana when it's set to dexterity scaling. However, in my opinion, the real reason to use this weapon is because of its unique R2 and charged R2 attacks that sort of do a double slash, and then if you press it again, does another double slash. The regular Uchi Katana and other Katanas do not have this feature, and it's really probably the best reason to use this Katana other than the higher base damage, particularly if you're going to use a poison setup. Now, what's really interesting about this R2 slash slash combo is that it helps you use talismans that build up your attack power, when you hit repeatedly, which is good. And also if you're two-handing it, when you do it, you can do this, you know, back to back. And if you use the charge to R2, it'll stagger an enemy just like charge to R2 with an Uchi Katana would do, but you've hit four times instead of two, which is good for getting that attack power build up, as I mentioned. If you wanted to min-max this build perfectly, you would probably have two Uchi Katanas that had poison on them. This would allow you to set bleeding more often, but since we're not focused on bleeding really with this build and we're focused on poison, we're using that Serpent Bone Blade and we're really focusing on building up that poison in order to gain the attack bonuses from the Mushroom Crown and from the Kindred of Rot's Exultation to get that extra 30%, plus the hits back to back to back in order to stack up attack power. In my opinion, what makes this build so good is the versatility of it. When you're dual wielding, you can either R2 or charge R2 for the unique R2 attack. You can press L2 to use double slash and go into that really, really quickly, depending on the situation. Or you can hit L1 to go into a dual wield combo. So you really have a lot of options and it allows you to get the right attacks for the right situation. For instance, when I'm fighting difficult enemies that don't stagger very easily, I will use the Serpent Bone Blade single-handed and I will use the charge R2 attack to hit them once, kind of stunning them for a brief second, and then hitting them again with the charge R2, that should stagger them, and then you can get a critical attack. I like to use this on enemies like Banished Knights or other enemies that don't stagger in one charge R2, or that don't stagger easily from repeated strikes. If you're outnumbered, the double slash ability is really good for hitting into groups of enemies, or maybe you're attacking an enemy and another enemy is aggroed onto you, switching to them and finishing your L2 double slash combo, can take them out even if they're not like, you know, directly in front of you, maybe they're off to the side, once you kill that first enemy, the camera will lock onto the next one, and by pressing L2, your character will turn and swing into that enemy, and that combo is really fast, so that gives you really good options. And by dual wielding, the L1 combo actually allows you to build up poison very, very quickly because you have higher poison buildup on the Uchi Katana, and that also builds up your attack power through the, you know, Millicent's Prosthesis and Wing Sword Insignia even faster. And if you happen to have the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, then that's even better for this build if you can get someone to drop you one or if you're in New Game Plus. And also by dual wielding, when having that Uchi Katana in the left hand, you're also well able to put another Ash of War on it, like something like Poison Moth Flight that was buffed in 1.04 that's actually faster now. Its damage is pretty good with this build, especially if you are able to get, you know, your attack power up from repeated strikes, set that poison, switch to one-handing your, you know, uh, Uchi Katana, and then pressing L2 to get that off, and then going back to dual wield. That's really good. Another thing that I like to do is use the Wakizashi in my offhand instead of the Uchi Katana, and that's because it not only allows you to do the same moveset even though it's a dagger, but you can put parry on this. So this gives you the option to parry while you're dual wielding, and then when you're two-handing the Serpent Bone Blade, you can still do that nice charge R2 combo if you want, or you can go into double slash if you need it, or you can go back to du dual wielding really quick and go into a dual wield combo or parry. That gives you like four different options that you can switch back and forth really quickly. And like I said, if you have the Uchi Katana in your left hand and the Wakizashi in your left hand, you can swap back and forth between these as necessary if you just up your equip load a little bit, which isn't much. And again, you would infuse the Uchi Katana or Wakizashi with poison in order to add poison to these attacks to help you build up poison faster when you're dual wielding. When it comes to armor, I'm using the Mushroom Crown. This is to get that extra 10% attack power when you set poison on something, and that includes yourself. Which again, you can use the raw meat dumpling in order to do this to yourself if an enemy is poison immune. In order to keep triggering this effect, you can cleanse it and then re-trigger it, etc., uh, which is a great way to do this if necessary. Beyond that, I just have a mix of very heavy armor pieces, pretty much, you know, the heaviest you can get away with, however much endurance you want to put in, in order to have very high poise and protection. And this will allow you to finish your combo if you get hit while you're mid it, or to finish your double slash if you get hit while you're mid it and not get staggered out of it. 
and will allow you to trade damage and still get off very, very good damage, which is great. As far as talismans go, I have Shard of Alexander, Winged Sword Insignia, or Rotten Winged Sword Insignia if you can get someone to give it to you, Kindred of Rot's Exaltation, and Millicent's Prosthesis. So Winged Sword Insignia and Millicent's Prosthesis work the same way. They increase your attack power with multiple hits. You got several ways to do that with this build using the R2 function. Gives you two hits each time you press it or charge R2, which is great. Double slash hits, I think, six attacks if you do the full combo. And then you have Dual Wield, which obviously hits faster than, you know, a single R1, R1 spam would do. So you got a lot of ways to build that up. Kindred of Rot's Exaltation works like Mushroom Crown, but it gives you 20% attack power for 20 seconds, and this is great. You're going to be trying to set poison on that pretty often. And Shard of Alexander will just increase the damage of Double Slash when you use it. This one is kind of optional. You can swap this one around if you find you're not using Double Slash as much. It really depends on the situation. I like to switch this for the Dagger Talisman sometimes when I'm working on using you know, Charge Shard 2 to stagger enemies and then critically strike them. But it's really up to you, and you can swap that around for other things too, like maybe the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, or Ritual Sword Talisman if you want more damage. It's kind of your flex spot, and you can put whatever you want in there. So again, what I really love about this build is the amount of flexibility it has. If you have the Wakizashi equipped, you can do parry. If they have the Uchi Katana equipped, you can get a Poison Moth Flight in there if you have a poisoned enemy. Um, you can dual wield attack into enemies. Uh, you can use the charged R2 attack to stagger enemies and make sure that you are two-handing the Serpent Bone when you do that to get max stagger damage. Otherwise, you'll do a little bit less when you're one-handing. And you can use Double Slash, which doesn't matter if you're two-handing Serpent Bone or one-handing it because it counts as like the same damage either way, so that's not super important. But basically what I'll do is I usually run around two-handing Serpent Bone and go into that charged R2 combo or go into Double Slash as needed. And then if I find an enemy that you know, needs more than that to finish it off, I'll probably go something like dual wield and try and, you know, build up really high damage on it really quickly. Or I'll try and parry it with the Wakizashi if it's an enemy that you can parry. One of the great things about this build is that it's super durable because you have high armor and you have good poise so you don't get staggered constantly. And you don't have any buffs. There are literally no buffs with this build. The buffs become, you know, on you as you attack. So you don't have any spells or like that. A lot of the builds I've made have lots of buffs to them. I mean, Golden Vow is arguably one of the best spells, if not the best spell all around in the game, because so many builds can take advantage of it, no matter what they're doing, and getting attack and defense is really good. Um, but this one, you don't have to worry about buffing. So if you like playing builds where you don't have to worry about buffing and you have a lot more variety than something like the, you know, uh, Venomous Bloodblade build that we made, or Poisonous Bloodblade build, where basically you're just doing L1 attacks over and over trying to get your attack power up and set bleeding and poison. This one gives you a bit more variety than that. When it comes to attributes for this build, I have 50 Vigor, 24 Mind, 36 Endurance, 12 Strength, 80 Dexterity, 9 Intelligence, 14 Faith, and 9 Arcane. So Vigor is there. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's very high. You have very good armor. You're going to be trading damage with this build. It's a very, very aggressive build like some of the builds I've made. So trading damage is bad and having high Vigor allows you to do that and not die. 24 Mind is there because you don't have any buffs with this build. Double Slash is relatively inexpensive. Poison Moth Flight's really inexpensive. You don't really need a lot of FP because you don't spend a lot. So you could probably even get away with like 20 Mind if you want, but you're not going to use a ton of FP for this build, so it's not something you really need to invest much in. 36 Endurance is there because we're using very heavy armor, and we need that stamina. As I mentioned, we chew through stamina with this build, and we want to wear heavy enough armor that we get our poise up by it to about 56 or so so that we can withstand most attacks once and keep swinging through them. And this will allow you to still medium roll and have that heavy armor. Keep in mind that this stat will fluctuate a bit depending on the armor that you're using, whether you decide to, you know, add the dagger to your left hand as well as the Uchi Katana, or maybe you don't want to use the Uchi Katana and you're going to use the dagger instead. So it really depends on what your setup is, so this might fluctuate a little bit. 12 Strength is there because of my class. We don't need Strength at all really for this build, and 80 Dexterity is there because both the... Serpent Bone Blade and the Uchi Katana Poison scale very well with Dexterity. Um, this gives us very good high damage that is then impacted by those attack power increases from setting the poison and repeated strikes, which is great. We don't need Intelligence, Faith, or Arcane at all for this build. Those stats are purely based on the Confessor class that I'm playing. And it's really unfortunate that the Serpent Bone Blade doesn't have Arcane scaling on it to, in order to increase the poison buildup that it has in its damage like the Rivers of Blood does for bleeding, because it makes it harder to set poison with that weapon, which is one of the reasons that we're kind of forced to dual wield, because even using double slash 66 per, you know, hit in double slash, you know, times five or six, is still not as much as dual wielding, particularly when the Uchi Katana has better 
poison scaling or you know poison status effect infliction so if it had arcane scaling then you could put some points of you know that we're putting into dexterity into arcane in order to increase the damage of both of these weapons and increase their poison buildup which would make this more effective but because it doesn't have that kind of force to go the dexterity route and because you need to put poison on the uchi katana in order to help build that poison up when you're dual wielding it doesn't scale as well with dexterity as it would if you were playing heat a couple final tips as well the axe talisman actually increases the charged attack damage of your r2 uh, which is great if you're using it a lot for this build. So you may want to swap that out with the Shard of Alexander if you find you're using that more than Double Slash. Again, the benefit of the Charged Shard 2 is that it staggers far more than Double Slash. Double Slash does almost no stagger damage. So if you're trying to stagger a boss or an enemy, that Charged Shard 2 is the way to go. And lastly, if you're using the Flask of Wonder's Physique, using the one that increases your attack power the more you strike is very good because that's kind of the premise of this build. And also the Green Burst Crystal tier is good for this build because you need stamina recovery. Double Slash chews through your stamina even with high endurance. And so does Dual Wielding Attacks, even though it's a little bit better mana efficiently than Double Slash is. So getting that stamina recovery to be very high will help you in boss fights. Stay tuned for more Elden Ring build guides as we continue through 150 and get closer to level 200 NG Plus builds. <laughs> We'll